With current atmospheric CO2 levels higher than they have been in about 3 million years, we need to do more than just stop emitting. We need to remove CO2 from the atmosphere permanently and efficiently. Here at Silicate, we are taking part in the XPRIZE competition and our team aims to remove 1,000 tonnes of CO2 from the atmosphere by 2025. Hello, my name is Kira, and I'm a geologist and research assistant with Silicate. This here in my hand is a bag of waste concrete and today I'm going to be explaining to you how we utilise this waste product and turn it into a product that can capture and sequester CO2. I'm also going to explain how we measure our process. Our process harnesses the power of age-old geochemical reactions. These reactions take place during the chemical weathering of rocks. Let's break down the chemistry behind the breakdown of rocks. So, we need the rock, and we need something to react with and weather the rock. Rocks are composed of different minerals, and our material is in essence just a mix of different minerals. The concrete has two different fractions that are blended together a cement fraction and an aggregate fraction. The minerals in question for the cement portion, which is the liquid portion, are fast weathering minerals like Portlandite, also known as calcium hydroxide, and amorphous calcium silicates. The aggregate, or the crushed rock fraction, is commonly made of carbonate minerals like calcite from limestone and or silicate minerals like olivine from basalt. So we have the minerals. Now let's talk about what weathers these minerals. The key ingredient needed to sequester CO2 through chemical weathering is carbonic acid, H2CO3. H2CO3, carbonic acid, is the product of when CO2 mixes with H2O. A chemist might see a bottle of sparkling water as a bottle of carbonic acid, as it's basically formed when mixing CO2 with H2O. That's how you get the bubbles. Our carbonic acid doesn't come from a bottle. It's generated naturally in two places, the sky and the ground. In the sky, CO2 in the atmosphere mixes with H2O, rainwater, and it falls as rain, reacting with the minerals we've spread on the fields. In the ground, CO2 is found in soil pores. It comes from faunal, plant and microbial respiration. This CO2 in the soil pores mixes with water in the soil pores and generates carbonic acid, which reacts with our material that we've spread in the soil. The different minerals weather differently when in contact with the carbonic acid, but ultimately the products generated by the reaction are base cations like calcium and magnesium, and crucially, bicarbonate. If you follow the journey of carbon dioxide throughout the weathering reactions, we see that the carbon atom that was once in the atmosphere has now been locked up in the stable form of a bicarbonate ion. So in order to measure this process, we take gas flux measurements to track the change in um, CO2 flux from the ground using these machines. So crucially, we also take water measurements because ultimately the bicarbonate that we produce is going to end up in the soil poor waters. This is a lysimeter, a suction cup lysimeter. The bottom of this device has a porous cup on the end of it. We'll pump a vacuum through this pipe and that will create negative pressure inside so that it sucks water into the porous cup and can capture it in here. We'll then take different water samples from this and analyze them for changes in bicarbonate concentration throughout our application process. We'll also analyze them for increased levels of uh, cations like calcium and magnesium that have come from the breakdown of our material. So it's important to remember that these weathering reactions actually happen to rocks all around us in the natural environment all of the time. But naturally, the process is too slow to have any meaningful effect on human timescales. So to increase and speed up this process, we crush and mill our waste material, then spread it in the fields, and that increases the surface area available to be weathered, and it enhances the weathering. Not only can our material capture CO2, but it's multifunctional. It can also act as a pH amendment, making soils healthier for crop growth, 
The silica in the concrete also acts to improve root health, it strengthens the roots for crops, so it's multifunctional. But ultimately, how do we store this carbon? Well, the answer to that question is right behind me. I'm here on Duncannon Beach, about three and a half kilometers away from our field site. So what happens to our bicarbonate once it's generated in our field sites? Well, it's in the soil pore waters, and this soil water will percolate through the soils, make its way to ground waters, flow into streams and rivers, and ultimately then, make its way to the oceans. Once the bicarbonate has entered the oceans, it has a residency time of 80,000 years. So it's locked up and safe there. If you're wondering what happens to this bicarbonate after 80,000 years in the oceans, well, bicarbonate ions are negatively charged. So eventually they'll bond with something like calcium, which is positively charged, and that will make calcium carbonate, also known as limestone and once you make limestone you essentially emit all the carbon you've once captured but we're confident that after 80,000 years this should no longer be a problem <laughs>